In this video, I'm going to explain everything you need to know about frame rates for cinematic video. In this ultimate guide, I'm going to clear up any misconceptions and help you avoid mistakes that takes away from the cinematic quality of your films. Let me start by saying that all frame rates can be cinematic. Instead of asking what frame rate you should use, the more important thing to understand is when to use a frame rate in context of your shots. If you think you know everything about frame rates, stick around because there's a good chance you'll learn something new. If you want your videos to look more cinematic, you have to consider every shot and every edit as unique. I put together five questions you can ask yourself as the ultimate guideline to help you choose the best frame rate. Question one, what is your region? The only time you will choose a frame rate based on your region is when you're shooting anything that works with electricity like lights or a screen. This has got to do with the fact that different regions use a different energy frequency, better known as the alternating current, with the PAL region running at 50 Hz and NTSC region at 60 Hz. What this means is if you choose a frame rate that clashes with this frequency, you're bound to see some form of flicker. When you're using any form of lighting, the best practice is to stick to your region. That being said, the moment you move away from electricity, things change. For me to shoot 60 frames per second in South Africa has a benefit over shooting in 50 frames because I'm getting an extra 10 frames per second, which means I can make my video 10% slower without seeing any lag. But again, I'm not simply going to choose a frame rate because it gives me more slow motion. Let me clearly say this, more slow motion doesn't mean more cinematic. You have to be intentional, which leads me to my next question. Will you slow it down? To me, the only approach to shooting slow motion is to ask yourself, will you absolutely slow it down in the edit? Not slowing down a shot taken in a higher frame rate immediately takes away from the cinematic quality. There's a misconception that shooting everything in a high frame rate is safer, because then you can choose which shots you want to slow down, right? Wrong. There's a massive difference between a shot taken at 25 frames per second and one at 100 frames per second not slowed down. When you compare the two, you can clearly see the difference with 25 frames per second looking more natural and 100 frames looking choppy and digital. The only time this is acceptable is if you want to do speed ramping, but yeah, the majority of the shots are still being slowed down. Another mistake is not conforming or interpreting your footage in post. If there's one thing I want you to learn today, this is it. You have to set the frame rate of your clip to match the frame rate of your timeline. Here in South Africa, by default, I edit only on a 25 frames per second timeline. So when I import the clip shot at a different frame rate, it's crucial to interpret or conform it, because if you don't, you'll get a horrible lag when you export. Take a look at this drone shot at 30 frames per second. Export it at 25 without conforming it to my timeline, it will look laggy, but the conformed one, although slower, will be smooth. And that's why it's crucial to make your decision when you shoot. Once conformed to your timeline, the clip will automatically be slowed down and stretch in length on your timeline. It doesn't matter what frame rate you shoot at, you have to conform the frame rate to the one in your timeline. For cinematic video, there's only two frame rates you should use for your timeline, either 24 or 25 frames per second, which depends on your region. If you're living in the PAL region, there's absolutely no reason why you should shoot on 24 frames per second, because it's in no way more cinematic than 25. These frame rates are known as the natural frame rates or normal speed, which leads me to my next question. Are you shooting sound or dialogue? In this case, only shoot 24 or 25p, because like I mentioned, if you don't conform your 30p footage to your 25p timeline, it will be choppy and slowing it down will ruin the speed of talking, causing syncing problems with the audio. Natural frame rates also work best with real-time audio and sound effects. This is one of the best ways to pull your viewer into a more immersive experience, where slow motion can cause a disconnect and require special sound design to create the same effect. Question number four, how fast is the movement? Who or what am I shooting? This is by far the most important part of the video because this is how you decide on which frame rate you're going to choose based on a shot. Here I use a few guidelines. Let's start with 24, 25 frames per second. We've already established that this is the best frame rate for shots that require audio, but it's also the best way to portray the real speed of your subject 
and gives the viewer an accurate feeling of things as they are, making you feel more present in that moment. A good example of this is the mountain biker coming down the hill. The only way to truly show the intensity and speed is to shoot in real time, which really makes you appreciate the skill of the rider. So ask yourself this, do I want the viewer to see things as they are? I also choose 25 frames per second when I'm shooting a wider scene where there aren't any big movements and slow motion will make it feel too static. 24, 25 frames per second is definitely the frame rate I use the most and Hollywood seems to agree. If you really concentrate on it, you'll notice how little slow motion is used in a full feature length film, but we'll get to that now. The most important factor here is your shutter speed because that ultimately determines how the shot feels. The 180 degree shutter rule states that your shutter speed should always be double than that of your frame rate if you want to maintain the natural motion blur which your eyes are accustomed to seeing in real life. To me, this motion blur is what makes the shot feel cinematic. You can break the shutter rule if you do so with creative intent. For example, to create an effect with blur or tension with choppiness. In order to shoot at a low shutter speed but still keep your f-stop low for depth of field, you need to use a neutral density filter. An ND is like putting on sunglasses for your lens and brings down the exposure that comes with the low shutter speed. I use a variable ND since it allows me to adjust the exposure quickly on the filter, so it's easy to get the right exposure once your shutter speed is dialed in according to your frame rate. It's crucial to invest in a high quality ND filter as some cheaper alternatives will degrade your footage and cause all kinds of color casts and artifacts. I recently got the Nisi True Color VND and I have to say it's by far the best filter I've used with no color casting or cross polarization. Putting on an ND filter shouldn't change your image because it can create a lot more work in post-production and sometimes simply ruin your colors. The first example was shot at 25 frames per second at 50 shutter speed. Notice the natural blur that comes with the body movement. When you go over 50, the movements look choppy and unnatural. When you put the two next to each other, you can clearly see the winner that kept to the shutter rule. 25 frames per second, at 50 shutter speed. Breaking the shutter rule can also make certain objects look unrealistic, like moving water or a dress blowing in high winds, even in slow motion. Moving on to slow motion. Higher frame rates can easily come across as more cinematic because it just looks so damn cool. Problem here is when you overuse it. When your entire video is in slow motion, it can quickly become stale and lose the overall cinematic feeling you get with some shots. I've learned that slow motion has way more power when you are intentional about the shot. So this means that you have to use it at the right time. When you save your slow motion shot for a special moment, it has way more impact because you create contrast as you transition from natural speed, clearly seen in this example. All the shots are in 25 frames per second, and then I suddenly cut to a slow-mo shot and immediately it has a more powerful effect. In my film about the sea turtles, I have the sequence where Talita is getting ready for a dive, and the moment she jumps into the water, I switch over to 50 frames per second because she's entering an underwater world. This is exactly what slow motion does. It takes you into another world, an almost surreal experience showing things in a surreal way. Since most people only have access to 60 and 120 frames per second, I'm only going to focus on them as I rarely shoot anything over this frame rate. Let's start with 60. I use 60p wherever I want to portray an important moment or where I'm only cutting to music, like when I'm shooting fashion or faster moving objects. This is the frame rate I use the most when shooting slow motion, because it's not too slow and not too fast for a lot of human movements. 50 or 60p can immediately make certain movements feel more cinematic, like a head turning or hair flipping. The moment you go up to 120 frames per second, it has to be motivated. I use this for movements that feel too fast in real time. Here I'm referring to elements like water, smoke, snow, sand, lighting a fire, or any kind of movement that passes my frame too quickly. That means I'm more inclined to shoot a close-up at 120 or 60 because at normal speed it will pass my frame too quickly unless I'm going for a very fast-paced edit. Which leads me to my next question. What is the pace of your film? Last but not least, the pace of your film should also determine the frame rate you choose. If you want an all slow-mo video, you better have a script or the right music to complement it. If you're going for fast cuts, having slow-mo shots are sometimes too slow to show an entire movement, and that can be super frustrating to watch and even more frustrating to edit. So what frame rate should you shoot in? All of them. Personally, I still use 25 frames per second for about 80 to 90% of my projects, with the occasional slow-mo to create a moment 
but sticking to the shutter rule is crucial here, so I highly recommend you invest in the ND filter. If you like this video, please be so kind to leave a like, and if you have any questions, drop it in the comments below, and I'll do my best to answer. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.